Welcome to game 2. Now we had a big surprise in the first game and that is uh, Pokebunny actually dropping out first. Now uh, certainly I told you at the beginning of the last cast that anything can happen and each of the players has the capabilities to get to the final but Pokebunny dropping out first, this was certainly uh, the most unexpected thing for me. Uh, but it, I mean, he was Brown in that game, and certainly Brown wasn't playing bad either. So it was just how the game turned out. Now let's get ready for game two. We have Lich tech this time, also a very difficult tech. We saw it in the other semifinals from EU as well. So it will be a very interesting comparison. I will choose the observer's position again from the beginning this time. Now we already know who Pokebunny is this time, so that's a bit unfortunate, but shouldn't be too big of an issue. Also we have only one grid in the replay here. And also uh, Vo taking the game in the game one, uh, that was uh, really convincing from him. Uh, it was clearly visible he was gonna have it. But now let's focus on the game at hand. So here, all right, that's an interesting way of handling the first wave. I see it sometimes that they built like that at the very beginning for their uh, early game maze, but I never do it like that. Now the lives trading uh, was lost by Teal actually, whose camera we were on, but also his income was looking really good. But losing 13 lives early, uh, that's definitely not something you want to hap have happen. Again, he's building this little... Um, he's building with just half a space open. So that is uh, unique, I would say. At least for most players. Uh, most players build like that. So this is something that makes the player here recognizable, I would say, for another game. Yeah, this is usually how it looks from me as well, when you handle those wolves. It's nice to wait for the exact moment where the wolves actually reach here, because then they sort of bump into the tower, which takes some more time off of them. We saw this done very nicely by yellow here. Also here, this actually, this is not a surprising build. Now that I think of it, uh, with half a space here, only half a space up here is because you go like free up here and then you close it down here. Now here again with the bump. And here comes the first skelly wave. Now for a skelly wave of this size, what I would actually recommend is to build in here so that they come all the way to here and then that's the exact moment where you close and then they have to walk all the way around. Uh, but also it's very timing based if you can pull it off or not. Sometimes you have the gold in the right moment and sometimes you don't. Also another big scaly wave here, I would do this thing now. And this one is like a combined wave, he sent blues in front and put in his own big wave behind it so that it gets even further. That's also a very nice trick. And now here we see one getting through it, oh, it gets handled. Oh, again we see some towers uh, uniquely in the back. Uh, we had one player doing this in the last game also, so I suspect it's the same player. And here... Now this is the classical early game as I would say. With the exception of this right here. And we have one Plague Well. The Plague Wells are the very good uh, early damage and also mid game damage in this build. Uh, I wouldn't go too many frost towers early. Only perhaps at the uh, night stage, like 2 or 4. But uh, it's hard. I Probably it's better not to do it. So the first ground waves are coming in. But uh, Blackwell is such a good handler that uh, this might not even be the most exciting stage, only if when it comes to mod golems maybe. 
Yeah, we can see. Those are made for clearing waves of this health and size. The um, grunts are a bit harder to handle, but still with two it's super easy. Or three even. Yeah, we see three uh, like triplets of plague whales all next to each other, so that they uh, hit, hit the grounds down at once, so that they don't get to regenerate much. That's really nice. How do we have it here? Here the plague whales are spread out a bit more, but uh, this guy is concerned more with uh, laying down the entire structure of his maze already. So he's uh, going very heavy on the archer towers and just prints everything on the map, so to say. And then this also means that the early game units, they're going to spend a lot of time in his maze. And this gives him more time to react further down. Uh, but he doesn't actually need it, perhaps upgrade some of those, but no, this one plague well does perfect. Very beautifully held. So it has stabilized a little, only teal losing some more lives. Uh, this turquoise, so this is teal. And income wise also teal in the back a little bit. So he's feeling the pressure here from light blue. And also he's perhaps sending a bit more easily into emerald. Uh, a bit of a recurring theme or what's just naturally happening in the game is that when you yourself are feeling the pressure, so you sp focus a lot on defending, the guy whom you're sending to doesn't feel the pressure as much because you tend to not uh, mix together the hardest kinds of sense, but you just go for income sending non-stop because it's easier not having to think about it and so on. So uh, Emerald got perhaps a bit uh, of an income lead here because Teal was feeling the pressure. But now Emerald... Oh, I should start talking about that huge shade wave that is in Emerald's base. He's got a lot of Gunners and I like that. Gunners are pretty good to hold shades and also quite some Archer Watchtowers which are shooting down each and every one including the Rod Golem. Perhaps this could have been held with fewer Watchtowers uh, but still he did really well. Now let's focus a bit on Yellow here. Uh, he's doing some early Frost Towers in the midst of his, um, his grinders. Uh, which makes sense, but uh, it only makes sense theoretically. But balancing wise, I'm not sure if it's good. But on the also, each and every plague well he went, he upgraded into the 800 version. He didn't go for any more plague wells. Now we see a tiny little attack here, and it's also, of course, it's important that you don't get the leg open here, but it's also important that you don't over defend such a tiny little attack. And uh, by saying that, I think Yellow did a really good job just making two cannon towers. But upgrading one into the 1k version might have been a big investment. And now he's punished for it with the big shade wave on top by Emerald. And he's resp and also a lot of rot columns. So that, that nice little sequence was really good. But the response is correct. Getting a lot of 800 black. And uh, I think those road columns are all going down. But nonetheless, Yellow had to invest big, 12.5k most mace value. But his income early game must have been incredibly good, so that he's still second in income. And Blue, meanwhile, is first in income. And he's eating a ton of knights right now. And, he, oh, okay, he, he made two executioners already. Now those are going to uh, shred through the knights very easily. So he doesn't look in much danger to me at this point. Uh, it's interesting to notice that with the Lich Tech we see a lot of carvers. Like the first box is full of carvers. And we also saw this in the EU semi. This is just because you need the normal damage which you uh, don't otherwise have. And also because uh, like your main tower is more of a support tower actually which is the Lich. Now liches are really really good, but you can't have them as your main damage source. And the 10k, uh, the 10k plague are super good also. The plague fanatics, I think they're called. 
um, but you can't really uh, re or replace them with an ultimate tower. Uh, they can't really fit into that role perfectly. They they do some good job, but uh, there's a lot of reasons why you want to have this normal damage in your maze. And also he put in a whole line of uh, crushers. That's a very um, straightforward solution to that problem. Usually I try to like build the crushers in like six or seven different spots where they always have a nice place to get some good hits off. But uh, it's perhaps better to not focus on such small things so much and rather get one line in. It's very nice, I think. Uh, generally speaking, I don't think the crushers are a good unit. They might be a bit too weak, but it's very nice having them together with slow. We see a lot of um, trolls and uh, what's the other? The vengeful spirits lined up. So turquoise, uh, he must invest a lot in. I don't think he's gonna defend this. He's gonna just leak it. That's really nice. Uh, having the slower speed from the Vengeful Spirits first and then the fast trolls behind them so that they match up in speed near the end of the maze. So uh, Turquoise down to 62, Teal on the other hand down to 5 already. Also with a lot of Vengeful Spirits in his maze. But this scent doesn't look too strong. I'd rather go back to Turquoise who has a lot of Void Walkers in his maze now. But they are also being held. Okay, he's rebuilding now. Let's check some others. This doesn't look too hard to hold. Neither does this. Okay, here is the, the Void Walkers. I think they're actually good in this tech. Like, I love sending exactly like that, or perhaps even two sands of Void Walkers first, and then the faceless one with the aura behind. And then even a dragon spawn behind that, and then the air on top, so that it all stacks up towards the end of the maze here. So we're seeing it a bit like that here, a bit earlier already with the Wind Riders, but they're doing really good, I think. They have medium armors, so the guard towers are not good against them at all. Yeah, we see a lot of Wind Rider leaking here by light blue. So Turco is stealing some lives. Now, how is Teal doing? Oh, Teal is struggling. This is not yet it, he's got the molar wave to save him, but his income tells a story of a hard battle already. So 5 lives and 27k mace value, he might be dropping out before sudden death, unless uh, something really happens now. Now we see, because of that, Emerald is lowest in mace value, uh, which he just can because uh, Teal allows him to have it like that. But now that Teal uh, has stabilized, or does he have it stabilized? It's hard to say. Yeah, I would say definitely with those. But he's struggling. He's not thinking about the strong send. Ah, oh, he's now making the strong send. I was thinking he doesn't because he's rebuilding his maze at the same time. But he put in the strong send first, then went to the maze, and now he just has to send the air on top in the end which I really hope he'll do, will make him... Yeah, it might be a bit late. Well, let's find out. But the, the right kind of damage, he could not have sneaked those through here. Uh, the right kind of damage is definitely there. And the Wind Rider's a bit uh, late. Yeah, he might get like one life here. Okay, three, not bad. Yeah, but uh, that's really not what Teal needs. Yeah, okay, GG. That was a hard uh, pressure sent from Light Blue there. What did he send? Okay, a lot of Dragon Spawns got through. And he continues where he left off with this time with Emerald, putting a lot of Dragon Spawns with Faceless ones in first, then probably sending. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean the Turtles with the uh, Faceless ones. Then probably sending the dragon spawns behind. But he doesn't actually do it. And that makes perfect sense because of all the maulers here. Again, we see one ultimate uh, artillery tower together with the frost. It's good for handling the turtles. Now Emerald, he doesn't look shaken with the sudden um, offense from light blue. 
he definitely ramps up the mace value to the highest by uh, by quite a bit and now like that he is safely defending the, it's always a, a risky moment when one drops out and a higher income player is sending into you now you definitely want to be alert so emerald did a good job here i would say now we see a banshee wave from yellow into blue Blue is the income leader so far, but his mace value is a bit low, so those banshees are gonna leak. And he's on 44 lives, and this is 34 now, or 33. So despite being the income leader, I don't see him in the lead. I think Emerald is in the lead now with 126 lives. A really uh, okay income, not the highest, but he's not uh, hung up either. And his mace value is really good. Now we see Turquoise leaking some lives. And I think yellow is starting to feel the pressure from emerald. Oh yes, he does. This is a perfectly lined up scent. And all he has to defend it are 10k plague fanatics. And those just can't replace the 30k ones. So now we are seeing like a weak point of the lich tech. Oh, and the kobolds even. Yeah, that was a huge uh, steal. But at the same time, turquoise seems to have stolen just as much or even more from light blue so the the ranks are lightening up here we see yellow and light blue dropping down blue also dropping down but blue stealing some back now but also leaking some yeah the banshees they have traded back and forth uh, this is also where i dropped out the banshee stage with the lich tech this is really hard to hold yeah, especially with the kobolds first now we see light blue sending uh, infernals into emerald so this is actually the correct play i would say e even though the infernals hurt you a lot uh, they make the opponent spend a lot either so when the opponent is really strong in income and when you're low on lives then is when you want to get them but he didn't have the fuel to send air on top of it that's like a half-baked attack because he had to cancel it midway in order to not die i suppose Oh, and now we see the Infernals from Turquoise, so things are heating up a lot for Light Blue now. We see a lot of lit. no, we don't see any Liches from Yellow yet. Uh, but Yellow went into the Earth tech, so that is advisable of course, this is the most uh, obvious and go-to tech. Uh, because of the natural Gravedigger tech, you know, Gravedigger with Earth Guardian, it's one of the most popular tech puffs, and that for a reason because they both fit really well together you have natural defense you have the armor reduction already and you have a super strong damage source and now together with the slow all of a sudden what was a very risky situation and a very weak tech i would say with just this uh, two these two tech upgrades the tech is now super strong so up until like almost one and a half million income this could hold everything now just with the grave diggers, the discs, and the frost, and the earth in front, of course. You could, you know, theoretically, you could play this into sudden death now, but of course, it would be bad because uh, you wouldn't have the necessary things in sudden death and you would be too slow to transition. But for beginners, once they figure out the income game, uh, often when they go like the grave digger and the protector tech, then uh, this already carries them very far and when they get frost in the right amount at the right places this can already carry them into sudden death so light blue down to three we should be looking at him more <laughs> i always miss it when somebody drops out it's also hard when you don't really see the life sleep okay a little attack here uh, that's just for distraction and tanking some damage but this means that emerald is now sending big time into uh, yellow and he is sending the same how you would send into grave digger basically and that is a lot of kobolds in front then some or oh, okay a lot of auras actually and then air on top of it i would send much fewer of the turtles and the faceless ones so you have a big air sent on top of it but this mostly for income anyway i would say except for those kobolds you could work with those i would give him air on top now Let's get back to light blue. Yeah, he's easily handling it. As you can see, we have Grave Digger once. The 
we have grave digger twice oh griffin's leaking griffin's leaking from turquoise the griffins have been awoken so that means turquoise will be sending griffins into light blue soon and he's gonna try to take him out like that i assure you and light blue knows it he's gotta get ready fast and he might need some discs here now we see uh, blue being ready for the griffins and yellow actually defending a lot of griffins from emerald he's got the shrooms up and he's doing well okay so where's the griffin wave ah it's it's too late by now everybody got ready got the wind of the griffins already oh he even tags into the ultimates that makes perfect sense because if he loses free he's dead he needs more you need more bro Ooh, now he's got it. Very nice. Okay, so he didn't die to the Griffins. That means he's still in there, but lowest on income by like 100k. His days are definitely numbered light blues. While Emerald has etched out a significant life slit. Before that, Turquoise also had a good life slit. But now the gap has opened up between them. They were both on 100 and now it's 170 to 70. So this can be converted into a winning position now. Emerald also having the least pressure with Light Blue being under pressure. And before that Teal uh, was so under pressure from Light Blue. So Emerald uh, being the profiteer of that uh, etching out a big, big incomplete. Very good position for Emerald here. Uh, Turquoise could still challenge it though. He's close in the income and once he kills Light Blue uh, he can uh, knock on the door of Emerald without Emerald being able to hit back. So this is and also he's much ahead in maze value. Emerald is very low because he doesn't feel the pressure and because he's relying on set free tech puffs. Yes he was able to get through the Griffin stage without having to go shrooms so that saved him a lot of gold. Now come the big griffin safe. So he's a bit late. I gotta tell that to Emerald. So he will leak some lives now. He's a bit late in getting the full sh uh, wisps here. But he takes that with his 170 lives. It's completely okay. Oh, but, but light blue. That's like a heaven sent from him. Oh, wow. <laughs> I might even think that Emerald leaked those lives on purpose. It might be a strategic leak to keep uh, Light Blue longer in the game so that Turquoise doesn't get to send Emerald. <laughs> but uh, probably I don't think he did it on purpose. Okay, so we have the 1 million club separating itself. Yellow catching up now. But definitely... Um, I think now an income back gap between one and a half and one million is very very hard to come back from but because there is four million of base value between them it is not impossible actually they are closer together than it seems here and the only big issue is the lives at this point yellow down to 25 uh, with the highest in with the income leader sending into him this is a dangerous position for him even though he might be playing really, really well. No doubt he is. So we've got two full Ancient Guardian lives in the back. Uh, that's also uh, become meta nowadays, most players do this. Just to have some continuous armor reduction. And they deal more damage and they get to hit more altogether compared to them being just in front. Especially when you close down the whole front. So now Light Blue has stabilized. Once you can say they get to 7 or 8 million mace value, uh, the pre sudden death game sense cannot kill them anymore. Uh, they can immediately before sudden death if you already stack in some Kodos and Shredders, but it's very unlikely this is going to happen. Uh, unless Emerald wants to get to yellow, this is where I would see it still. And perhaps. Uh, Somebody wants to kill someone else with only 28 lives. So now the... Oh, we see Mountain Shines. And he managed to open up here. And now he's trying to sneak as many A-bombs as he can. Mm, but I don't think they're gonna do much. So many Lich, so much damage. But very nice move for sure. Always a big stress factor. 
here it's gonna be easily held yeah at this point it's about who can edge out the most income and who can complete his maze the fastest that's a very important thing to be as ready as you can be once the sudden death timer hits you have to be ready at three fronts so to say the first is up here where you want to have about five lines deep and then you want to have the, the correct mix of uh, ancient guardians in front some shrooms to heal them up at least one titan vault for the armor then you want to have lightning discs and holy discs and then you want to have the glyphs to kill the um, the phoenix and then you want to have the moonbeam and some other stuff like grave diggers to kill the mountain giants and down here you want to have an enforced position as well so that the phoenix don't just sort bypass your front and open up a big hole here uh, so this is the first front where you want to get ready then the second one is the actual damage output in your maze this is what's concerned with the shredders uh, that mostly consists of some moonbeam in the middle some grave digger but only some usually and then tons and tons of orb keepers and then a lot of titan vault in the back and then the third front where you want to get ready is the shrooms behind and perhaps get some liches in here and perhaps even get the glyph ready which he has here to handle the worms as easily as possible so we see him converting into titan vault now it's still pre sudden death and it's looking really good here the maze is already far the tactics aren't that far but the rest looks set and done also here it looks really good damage is up so they all gonna get into sudden death now yellow was losing some lives again arguably there was the strong scent from emerald unfortunately i missed it and now here we are at the sudden death yellow yeah he's almost ready he's got his lightning discs here and now he's going for tons and tons of glyphs as if to say don't even dare to shredder me bro i mean to phoenix me here we got some uh cliff emerald had uh, um, an easy way preparing you can see because it looks like really uh, cut out already uh, a big um, a bit of a bigger amount of glyphs but one hurricane elemental here to paralyze the phoenix that's really pretty two lich one vault big line of shrooms and some uh, guardians and some guardians again in the back that looks really ready now here uh, emerald is trying to nuke out yellow and not only trying to with 3.6 million uh, there's nothing yellow can do at this point i think with the big shredder wave he's out but he's uh, taking the shredders out well but still he yeah am i taking my mouth too full here i mean look at all those ancient wardens he might actually live but it's so close oh no nah he's not living or is he he's stealing some lives himself isn't he oh uh, he sent the early worms to get the lives wow i can't believe he lives honestly and neither can emerald emerald must have thought that he should be dead twice by now but his damage part was absolutely there not a nice big chunk of ancient wardens a lot of moonbeams a lot of grave diggers really good damage there now yellow is sending into blue he wants to get some lives back after defending so well oh it's starting to lag yeah so many people in sudden death always becomes laggy hmm. i don't think yellow is doing that much damage with the early shredders either he's even converting two lines of shrooms in the back to have even more damage yeah, the yellow not able to steal much back. That one's for sure. Now light blue was out. I didn't catch it unfortunately, but I think he was just on five lives or so. Oh, he actually managed to steal some up. Now blue's uh, frost worms are being held very nicely here, leaking some. Oh, yellow down to two lives. Oh, now the phoenix come. Yeah, when you're on so few lives, you can just fly phoenix over. Oh, that was lucky. 
he actually managed to get back up to 4, but then he lost some from the timer. Now we have two phoenix in blue's maze. Are they trying to do something, or are they just exploding? It looks like they're just exploding. Oh, he's actually flying them over one more time. And now it's blue against emerald. So turquoise was defeated by blue. And now we have the final situation. And emerald is still having his one phoenix here. But he's actually going for the big shredder sand. Mm, doesn't look like a huge sand though. Another enforcement is coming here. And blue... It doesn't look like he was able to get too many lives either. It's the two highest incomes and uh, the two highest lives going up against each other. And of course the two highest lives going in the final now. And Emerald is in the winning position, this is for sure. Is it Vo again? Is he in such a strong performance this time? I'm curious to see. And Blue, it might be Wild Pet, it might be Mach 2. Or even Pokebunny coming back here? Hard to say. Yeah, those might be like 10 lives for him. Let's see how many he leaks. Zero. Or he'll al he already lost some. But uh, Blue's life count is going backwards. However, now it's uh, tickling back up. Might get up to like 70 here. Oh, very nice. And Emerald, he's on 138. So let's see who will uh, keep draining in lives. Now Emerald is uh, getting his next big scent towards the end of his maze. Let's see how much gold Emerald has. Ideally, you want to have 9 millions right now. So that when your old wave gets through, you already start sending in the new wave. But Emerald chooses a different plan and goes for the Phoenix play. Oh, and... Ah, he's camping them here, and he's starting to deal damage. Ah, oh, it doesn't look like the prettiest Phoenix play, honestly. I like the camping part, but those two are super ready with Vault and with upgraded Holy Disk. But still he got through, so that is nice. But can he maintain it here? That's a big question. And at the same time, Emerald is leaking big now to blue. It remains to be seen if the Phoenix were the correct call, but perhaps Emerald was thinking that he's not making the same amount of damage to Blue as Blue is doing to him. This can be when Blue's maze is better. We have a nice mix of Earth, Plague and Frost discs here. Of course the damage also looks nice. I don't like this back part here with no slow. I would prefer to see some sludges in honestly. But seems to be good so far. Now Emerald stealing big time, yeah. Blue is down to 27. He was able to rebuild, but Emerald sneaked through a lot. So he might be on the track to win it. Okay, now Blue comes in with his big offense. How much gold does he have? Yeah, still almost 9 million. So this is gonna be a really big send from Blue. Perhaps his last big offense. Yeah, Emerald tries to win it with the Worms now. I'm not sure if I like it so much. The worm defense is really good. Like those are all gonna get stuck here. Prove me wrong though. 30 lives. Ah, uh, 152. Oh, actually they might be getting through. Yeah, he doesn't go for more uh, shrooms in the back. But still, they yeah, th this big chunk here will be held back. So it stays at 155 most likely. And blue, meantime... Oh, he's nearing seven, 9 million lives. If he sends in a big one now... Yes, and he continues to send it with the little pillow from the old send. So this is even stronger than a full send now. Because he was correct, uh, he was at 9 million at the right time. So blue getting back up to 46 lives. And sending in the no another big send here. With... Um, with Emerald having one line converted in the back, converted into Titan Vaults from the Shrooms. So perhaps if he... Yeah, now he puts a lot of Worms also behind it. So this might be the maximum difficulty to hold now. Oh, but at the same time he dies. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I missed it. But he did whatever he could, definitely. So who is the winner here? Let me quickly check. 
Uh, oh, now we get it again. So Vo was number one, right? And then we have uh, Maktub was number two. Uh, it's hard to see it in this sort of interface. So Resin was sixth. Coffee Bunny was fifth. No, sorry, Poke Bunny was fifth. Coffee Ninja was third. Wild Pet was fourth. And then, yeah, um, wait. Wo was second and Maktub was first. Yes, Maktub won it. Ah, oh, here we see it when they were defeated. Okay, now it makes sense. So Maktub won it, then Wo second. So that means Wo is still first overall, and Maktub is second. And then we have uh, Coffee Ninja in third, very nice third place. And then we have Poke Bunny fifth, Wild Pet fourth, and Resin uh, sixth. So I think Wild Pet is on seven points now. On rank 3, but I'm not entirely sure. Coffee Ninja, uh, how many points did he have? He had 1 in the first game, and he's getting 4 now. So it will be between Coffee Ninja and Wild Pet for the third place in the... No, does that... Yeah, that actually makes sense. And Maktub and Wo are already qualified. And Pokebunny and uh, Resin, theoretically, with uh, W... They might still get third, uh, but it's very unlikely. So this is the position for the final game, and I see you guys there.